Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 9 of Eckenborough, our City Skylines 2 Let's Play. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for all the support last week on our little old town cathedral district. It ended up turning out really nicely, and uh, definitely more work to do over here in West Whiskey. However, in today's episode, we're going to be taking inspiration from Ellesmere Port in the UK, and particularly the M53, uh, to rework the national road connection that comes with this map into a dual carriageway system, at least for the stretch of it that we're working with today. Uh, so I'll throw up the interchange we're taking inspiration from and then we're also going to drop in rail integration today as well. Going to get the rail yard in alongside a new power plant, push some bridges and some port activity. Lots of fun. Please enjoy your time lapse and we'll catch you in the live play. Hey guys, so in the first time in the city we have this enormous cargo harbour which is really going to give a lot of import and export functionality to Edinburgh of course once that feature eventually works because as far as I'm aware the import feature of Cities 2 is still pretty heavily bugged but either way we are going to put in some shipping lanes so let's open up our tiles and see just exactly where it is we need to get to uh, there's a connection out here isn't there? It looks like we want to connect onto this one so let's open up as little tiles as we can. I imagine we'll have to do some terraforming through here as well. So we'll open up these, also get these ones and just sort of work our way out towards that shipping lane. That should be enough, I believe. Let's also come in and just widen out uh, some of these riverways as well, just to give those ships a little more breathing room. I imagine we'll do some significant terraforming once we come to build out this side of the city. But right now, I just need it to be a little wider than it already is. Also soften it as well, so it's not quite as nasty. But we'll pay more attention to this once we get out to build over here. Cool. So now let's grab 
This is the first time I've really played with these before, so let's see what we want to do. And this is the width of a medium seaway, is it? Okay, that overlaps, that's okay. I guess we can just come out here, right? This seems like it's going to be alright. And we'll just meander our way out to sea. Fabulous. So we now are hooked into the national shipping lanes, which is very good. And so I also believe we can rename our outside connections, can we? Um, we can find one. Where is one? Yeah, if we come over here and click on the arrow. Yeah, we can rename them. So let's have this one as Paladin. And then there's another one over here. That's Broughton. Do that one to Navaria. There we click on this. Oh yes, Origin. Paladin to Navaria. Massively on board with that. <laughs> That's really cool. That's a great little feature, being able to rename your uh, outside connections, isn't it? But either way, we now have this super duper enormous container port that does have a couple of upgrades on it that we could bring in. Uh, we could do more uh, cargo cranes, which I don't think we need right now. And there's also warehouses as well, which again, we haven't prepared the space for that. But there's no reason why it couldn't sit here. We just obviously have to remove the road and some factories there, which I'm not averse to doing that, I don't think. I think we will prepare for that eventuality. Cool. Yeah, so that will fit in there now. So I think we will actually just go ahead and do the upgrade straight away. So let's have... I'm assuming this is just giving more storage capacity, right? Yeah. That's only 25,000 a month. We can definitely afford to do that. So we'll have that there on the side. That's really going to expand the port infrastructure, isn't it? I'm pretty happy with that. And then we'll use uh, this road here as a way to just border off that area there. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that, has to be said. So I want to do a lot of reworking of the industry today because we have uh, just a lot of mass zone over here. A lot of this was just put in to satisfy demand, but I think now we can do uh, a much better job with this, really. I think we're going to correct some of our port terraforming. We're going to bring out some more zonable space over this way to essentially line up with that road there. I would like to start bringing in some much more um, specifically sized and chosen uh, industrial zoning. So what I mean by that is I really want to go for sort of no more than two wides, really. So this is kind of a perfect example here. So when we zone in these shapes, we're going to get much smaller industrial units and they're not going to get nearly as many smokestacks, which is really helpful for just making vanilla industry look a little bit better, I think. So we'll bring that in. And again, once they've all grown in, we can just focus on the rest of them. And then they'll all grow. We also get much more zoning packed in here as well. Whereas we will still do some larger 4x4s because I appreciate the aesthetic of the tanks. But for this space here, I do want specific sort of two deep spaces, lots of two by four spaces. And uh, we'll do the same over here again as well. Because the city just has like insane amounts of industrial demand these days. Complaining of high rent before he's even been built. Okay, <laughs> whatever, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll bulk zone up the rest of them if they're gonna grow. And again, once the others have come in, we can just throw those up now. Cool. I don't hate that at all, I don't think. So our new interchange is flowing really nicely here as well. Uh, really good inspiration to take from Ellesmere Port in the UK. Uh, just for a big port interchange. This is uh, one taken off the M53. You would have seen in our Google Earth shots in, in the edit. Cool. So this is going to grow up. You're going to see how they spawn in, right? Compared to bulk zoning it, you get so many smokestacks. And then we come in here. And it's just a lot calmer. Much more simple, realistic industrial units, I think. So we're going to delete some larger roads so we're probably going to fall into a few production deficits with our stone mining in particular today but something I'm willing to let happen because I really want this space to be properly designed and look as cool as possible. So let's come into our train yard so we can place this beast down right and this is pretty enormous isn't it so let's see what we want to happen here uh, so trains are going to run off this direction of course because I'd like them to eventually hit up with the mining town over here and I also envision them coming along the river, eventually hooking into Whiskey or West Whiskey, and then the National Line over this way. So I think with that in mind, the best orientation for the rail yard is going to be 
about there, I reckon, something like that. Just sort of see how we feel about that position in the larger kind of port space, I guess. Now, I don't mind that, but it's probably not totally what I'm after. So let's just allow ourselves some more room. We're going to remove a lot of this zone in here. And we're going to kill a lot of people's jobs today, but it'll be fine. So I think I am happy with the position of the rail yard here. I think I'm going to be on board with that. As how it sits there in the port, I think. So let's begin to bring out some of these rail lines so we know they're accounted for kind of within the grander infrastructure plan. Um, I love some much larger curves here. You can go for 109 by 109. I think it'd be really cool to see all the trains snaking out of here and then also curving around this way as well. Around all the rest of the industrial infrastructure over this way. So let's bring it out. And of course we're going to have to start crossing over the new interchange here as well. So let's account for that connection first. So let's come up to 7.5 meters. And we'll cross over here. Of course that looks a little weird now, but just sort of checking our bearings. I think we'd be okay with that. And of course we're coming back down toward an elevation in the land here. So coming back down to earth should leave us at a pretty sensible gradient for trains, we hope. I believe the limit is no more than 3 degrees, if I can even find it. That's 2.7. Okay. And we'll probably move this wind turbine just for a hot minute. We will allow you to stay at some point, but for right now you're just a little bit in the way. Okay, so we've definitely got the room here to squeeze this along. Now we'll do this in a time lapse in a second to bring it over to West Whiskey. But over from this point, I now love to come all the way down we just go straight in there at a decent angle that doesn't look like it's going to be too steep and horrendous does it i do like the embankment there as well that's going to help detail our interchange a little bit more too isn't it pretty happy with that and then i can snake off over the hill and far away we'll set that up in a second and then out the other side again um Ellesmere port in the uk has turned out to be wonderful inspiration for an area like this because there's Lots of rail by the water over there as well, and super big industrial port. There's a, a Stanlow oil refinery. It's over there as well. It's a real heavy industrial port in the northwest of uh, England. So a really nice inspiration, I think. Cool. Yeah, and then all this can snake off. We'll have some small lines coming through here as well. We hope we'll see what happens with different curvatures. We can experiment here with some rail yard of infrastructure. See how it all pans out. See we can get some nice curves in here. Don't want to upset the train please with this one. We will try and respect it where we can. And this one again will bring it all down this main line and then it can all sort of slowly slip in using these wonderfully slippery new road tools. Makes doing stuff like this a lot more enjoyable when the road tools are much more flexible. Cool. So it all splits off and branches off into here at some point. That looks a little weird with that connection, doesn't it? Can we perhaps redo that one to come into this node down here? Something like that. Cool. I don't think that's too horrendous. I actually learned quite a lot about the ladder systems working with ILOS rail yards back in CS1. So hoping this is still honouring some of that knowledge at least. <laughs> we'll wait and see. And then we can have all these come around and mirror uh, back into that main line as well. And we've still got 40 tiles left to unlock as well, so I suppose we could actually have uh, trains arriving in here at some point too. There's no train upgrade for this, is there? There is a rail connection. Don't know where that adds in though. I don't, not that I don't think we need it. So what we're storing here now, we've got 1,000 tons of goods, we've got concrete, which is obviously super important, crude oil, very nice. Any ships planned to come into Edinburgh yet? Not quite, don't know what's going on with those clouds either. Maybe they will come in one day, hopefully in today's episode at least. Cool, but well, that's looking pretty sweet here, isn't it? I don't mind that at all. So let's have a look at our power. Um, we're actually about to fall into the red threshold, so this also feels a good point to have a look at some of our power infrastructure. So where can we take it? We could take it down gas, uh, coal, and then nuclear, or we could go 
the green route and go geothermal and then solar. Which that's what I'm thinking we want to do. So I think we'll go emergency battery station and then grab a geothermal plant. And then I think now because we should kind of upgrade to a big boy city, we're still exporting all our garbage. So why don't we also grab the recycling center as well and we'll have this in the port. Cool. So the geothermal plant wants to make use of underground water sources uh, to function. Now I guess it just has to be over it a little bit, doesn't it? Now I just happened to have placed a rail yard there, <laughs> which is a little bit in the way, but that's going to be okay, I think. I'm just going to relocate the taxi depot temporarily too. Have that there. I just think we'll delete the taxi depot and place in another one because I want to change how we actually upgraded that. I'm not quite happy with it anymore. So we'll have taxi depot there, and I think we just had the garage upgrade on it, didn't we? One garage will also do dispatch center and electrical taxis. And then with our bus station, we'll also do the electric bus upgrade too. Oh, with that in mind, then just seeing where <laughs> the groundwater is here, I think I now really want my geothermal pump here. Which is fine. I think we just do what we had initially planned and move the rail yard onto this road instead. Which is fine. So I'll cut this out rather than recording it, but it'll be the same. Let's just move our rail yard down here and then we can have our plant behind it. Cool. So we now have the rail yard positioned a little bit further forward in the port. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And then behind that now, again, I'm just going to dig out a little bit more terrain. I also really liking how um, you know, heavily terraformed this port's becoming. It's making it look a lot more sort of man-made, you know, a little bit more manufactured, which is a vibe I sometimes appreciate. So, geothermal plant. This thing's a beast. Isn't it? Absolutely enormous. Uh, let's also push this a little further back over this way. I've also visions of a bridge passing over this port as well. A lot to do here today. <laughs> of course, some uh, pretty big plans for what I want this to look like. But of course, first time we've ever built a container port in Cities 2, so we'll uh, we'll see how it turns out. The bus depot is going to prove to be in the way again, so I think I'll just delete it and then replace it. It's got some upgrades on it I probably want to change the position of now. So, let's have our bus depot here. I know we're spending a lot of unnecessary money today, but it'll be worth it in the end. Cool, so it's got its upgrades again. That's going to be fine. And now that gives me a little bit more room to have that bridge coming through the middle, which again, now I'm seeing it, it's a chance to remove a little bit more industrial zoning. Don't worry, we will get a lot of this zoning back in the design time lapse. But uh, I just want to make sure the infrastructure is accounted for first. Then to accommodate the bridge, we're going to have a two lane elevated highway here. Let's go for a 10 meter clearance or something like that. Shouldn't be too bad now. Of course, we can zone back underneath uh, the buildings in CS2, which is going to be tremendously helpful. So we'll reinstate some of these over here and worry about the ones underneath in a second. At uh, what point are you going to hit the water? Let's bring you out to about there. Let's keep that going as well. And then we can switch to our two-way truss bridge here, I hope. And if we're going to come right across, we'll have to buy a couple of tiles here. Eventually this is going to hook in with the national road that leads to the next town over at the mining town once that exists. Let's have a little look-see here. So Let's keep it going with two-lane highway just while we get across the water. And then once we are across we can upgrade hopefully some segments into the uh, trust bridge here. I think the first impression is certainly it needs to be quite a bit higher than that. I think something like that is more what I had in mind. I think that's the height I want the bridge going over. Don't mind it sat there at all, I don't think. It's going to be quite nice. Uh, and then we can prepare the gradient now to come in from this way, hopefully just with that two-lane highway. I'll have this one come straight there, maybe knock that back a touch further. Go for... Let's just bring it down from the bridge first of all. That brings us up to 10 meters, which is about what I want to be, I think, isn't it? How do we feel about that slope there coming into the port? Yeah, don't mind that at all. Yeah, we're not going to have much, well, any traffic on this road today. We're really just about preparing that eventual connection that's going to cross over. Uh, and then you should now just be a pretty simple connection to come 
uh, over the highway, over the rails, and we'll develop a roundabout, probably I have one here, I suppose, although I imagine I'll probably rework this junction uh, in the detail and time lapse, and then we'll come back down to earth, come straight in like so. That does give a connection and uh, a pretty nice bit of infrastructure coming out of the port, doesn't it? We will be happy with that, I think, for the time being. Not totally horrific. Uh, whilst we have removed some of that zone in uh, with the pillars, we can now uh, draw that back in. Just want those two deeps to reappear. I uh, really do love the fact we can have buildings on the bridges now in Cities 1. It's a big improvement, isn't it? Big fan of that one. Cool, so all of our buses are redispersing across the lines again. That's probably going to cause a bit of traffic, but it will stagger out. Uh, so now we have that available, uh, I want to factor in our geothermal plant. So let's face, let's place this with the water source in mind. So let's go for road required at the front there, isn't it? Let's place it and then just see what we think about positioning. I think positioning is going to be quite important here, isn't it? Uh, the transformer, I think we're just going to run underground again, like we did with the one for the um, coal plant here. But, where do we want this to sit? I almost think I'd like the sort of infrastructure bit of the building to be closer to the rail yard, which will just mean a 180 rotation. But to accommodate that, the road connection of the building is actually this side, isn't it? So let's just dump it there for a second. And we will grab a small alleyway. And we want to snap just to the sides of the building here. And we want to come out right to where we can draw up the edge of the rail yard, which is there, is it? Make sure everyone that's that right one. Yeah, that's it right there. Cool. Let's bring that across. Wonderful scenes. And then we will re grab this, make sure we're snapped to the sides of a road. We've got 180 watts of production there. 150, sorry. I think that's a much nicer position in there, isn't it? So I have another power plant now, so we shouldn't need power for a good long while, especially once we begin to trade that as well, once we get it hooked into those outside connections. So let's bring our trans our power line underground. And can we just run this straight into the same transform as the the coal power plant is? It looks like we can. And that should us into yeah a lot of export we're exporting 151 megawatts which is really cool we'll hopefully make a bit of money out of that and then a lot of this terraforming here can just be sloped out i imagine we're probably going to tree line quite a bit of it as well uh, come the detailing let's also do a little bit of level and then some soften as well just so it doesn't look quite as obviously terraformed something like this should be okay and once it's all treed up we're not really going to be able to tell anyway Fabulous. I don't think I'd actually mind having the uh, dirt road or the uh, alleyway itself wrapped around the entire power plant. Cool. And then in terms of a connection for this, I think we'll have it hooked into the main port and we'll also have a little connection that slips up into National Road as well. Not that it's going to be getting a crazy amount of traffic and I don't think there'll be any more significant infrastructure underneath that to allow that traffic to go down there. So we should be okay. The only reason they should come out here is to get to the power plant. See what happens anyway. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, obviously, like I think planning in cities too is so much more, um, I guess, complex because the assets are just so much bigger these days, right? At least in my experience. Right, cool. So let's bring out some more roads along here now because I'd like these to hold. Uh, some more industrial and office zoning. So we'll have that there. Let's also bring one out this way as well. That looks good to me. Really love those flexible nodes. Super cool, aren't they? And uh, then we'll do some office this time. But again, I want to save um, smaller office spacing. If we can, let's go for... We can get a two deep in there. Can we two by four? Go for some more two by four then, in that case. Keep it small. And then can we get a little alleyway in down here? Looks like we can. Off the back of that perhaps some very small industry. Really want to try and maximise the space here. 
that's good i'm happy with that uh, and then we'll upgrade this into alleyway and we'll just create a little rail crossing here shouldn't be anything too bad shouldn't upset the rail please hopefully and then i think we'll get lots of trees along this bank and against what is now turned into a dual carriageway a load of trees through here to shelter the view to the industrial area it makes a match always enjoy a spruce oak forest seems to go uh, quite nicely for me now this is what i was worried about was people coming to take this lane out so i think we will actually end up removing that entirely yeah i think we will actually end up removing it altogether is that a tornado in the river is it gone I think we're okay, right? Goodness. Is it, was that was that the tornado? <laughs> oh my word. Oh no. Why? Destroyed by weather. Wait in the hearse. Oh, the downtown got destroyed. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. All the fire engines turning back up. It's all getting rebuilt slowly. Absolute disaster. Do we have that logged in the report? Tornado. 612 casualties. Oh my word. <laughs> God damn. But did that just destroy? Yeah, that rid hit the downtown, didn't it? Oops. Oh well. Did we lose any uh, patrons in that one? No, all the patrons are still, still kicking around. It looks like Josh got divorced from Marion. That is a shame. But Rich is a senior now. But anyway, uh, quite dramatic scenes in the downtown as downtown Edinburgh is hit by a tornado. 619 casualties. Jeepers. That is a big one, isn't it? Uh, we've had a little car crash here too. Oh dear, still kicking off in the town today, isn't it? Okay, but either way, we got some more infrastructure to play, so of course we did also grab uh, the recycling centre in the upgrade as well. So where do we want to have this? We'll have this out here by the power plant, which is okay, I think. It's a bit of a smaller structure, kind of blends in with the smaller building of the geothermal plant there, doesn't it? I think it'll be okay with it there. I also wonder as well if we consider adding a little slip lane off of this highway. We can just do it in little incremental stages and have a little ramp just come down here. Like that. And then straight into here. Just as a future proof design. Allow people to peel off into the port if they're coming from this bridge. I don't think I hate that philosophy, I guess. We'll leave it in. At least as a reminder that we want to do something similar to that. I almost wonder now, just watching the kind of port flow here, because we've got two little entrances in. I wonder if it's actually better to configure this as a one-way system. So we'll have that in as one way, and then this way is the way out of the port, essentially. But in doing that, it also makes this slip lane a little bit redundant. So why don't we keep this as three lane asymmetric, perhaps? Maybe that's a little bit better for that solution. And then we'll just have this as the way out. I don't hate that. Then everyone can enter via this one here and then take the asymmetric road into the rest of the port. That seems pretty sensible for me. Also, we're seeing these smaller office blocks come in now, aren't we? Got six by six over here. Got four people working in these. Six in those. Cool. I wouldn't mind the return of some larger industry, so where we've maybe got a six by six space here under the bridge might be quite cool to get back in. Don't want it to just be small industry. Cool, but otherwise, guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. I'm going to thread this rail line pretty much all the way along the river, and probably, and there's a nice little space here where it looks like the rail might run quite happily parallel with the road. So we're probably along here. Get some of these trees out of the water as well. It looks a little ridiculous now, doesn't it? Uh, and then carry on doing lots of specific zoning, lots more tree work around here, probably some light terraforming work where it needs to be just rechecked as well. And then I uh, just blend this dual carriageway network in as it's really upgraded the port of whiskey today, hasn't it? Now, how are we doing for port now? Loads more storage there, isn't there? We're storing decent amounts of all relevant supplies as well, it would seem, right? A few high rent warnings across the city, but otherwise, uh, we have regrown in the downtown. Wasn't too bad then, was it? We have one of our tram networks now, too. Downtown's getting busy, isn't it? Very nice to see. How does the uh, port look from the downtown, I wonder? We were to enjoy a view over. Yeah, I really think, you know, the position of all those big service assets, the port, the two power plants, the bridge even cutting across through there as well. You can see the roof of the rail yard, put all the industry in between. It's uh, turned into a pretty cool port space, hasn't it? But either way, let's refine it, chisel it out and make it look how we like. And then we'll be back for a detailed review. Let's do some detailing, and then we'll be right back.
Okay guys, so I finally remembered that we now have to draw in our own cargo routes. So believe me, having just coming off the back of making two CS1 videos, I totally forgot this episode <laughs> that we do have to draw in our own cargo routes now. So thank you we have done that. Uh, so we have cargo ships um, arriving from Navaria, if I can click on one of them, which I absolutely love. <laughs> well, so cool. Of course, Navaria had an enormous container port, so it absolutely makes sense that they're shipping out to Edinburgh across the, the high seas, right? Really, really cool. But either way, now we can now enjoy a look across the expanded and finished port of Port Whiskey. There's a million different buildings I could add in here to keep growing this thing out, but I don't want it to get too big, and it's already pretty massive, so let's have a little look what's happened. So our rail line now flows all the way alongside the rail, and we're going to bring this up into probably next episode when we finish West Whiskey with another build. Uh, and indeed the introduction of our first train lines as well. Which is a really good opportunity here, isn't there? Now all the trams and the buses. And uh, so this just runs along the river now. And this again, this is going to look so cool. Uh, once we've got trains running along this space, isn't it? So this now comes through there and back to the rail yard. Uh, our highway interchange is flowing really nicely actually. Uh, as we begin to turn this um, single lane national road into a bit of a dual carriageway system. The further along we develop. And uh, it's flowing like a dream, you know, considering we've got lots of heavy industry infrastructure over here. There's garbage, power, jobs, public transport, uh, road maintenance, import and export. There's a lot of stuff coming through this road network. And it's uh, handling it like a dream. Got some fresh lane maths up at the end here as well. And then roundabout flows nicely. And then that one-way configuration on the left side seems to be working nicely with the asymmetric on this one. I got some frontage, industry, and office space up against this space. There's a lot of different mix and matches here. Again, we still just got insane demands for it. <laughs> but um trying my best to ignore the RCI and just build what I like whilst also maintaining the flow of the simulation, if you know what I mean. So we'll come through here. Get lots more of this smaller zoned industry and office space together. It just results in much less smoke stacks, I think, which is always a appreciated aesthetic. You compare this block to this block over here, which hasn't been small zoned, and you can definitely see just how much less smokestacks spawn in. I've done some more stone mining and then terraformed it, so again it looks like a pile of aggregate or gravel, or indeed just stone just waiting to be imported and exported from the port, etc. So just a little bit of terraforming under those stone mining goes a long way, I think, just to add in some piles into them. And then we've also got some more space fillers using that stone mining stuff out here as well. As the rail leaves the port alongside another road, that just happened to have some sort of happy retaining wall action here. Uh, the train is now prepared to cross over into the other town so we can prepare those passenger connections indeed when we do want them to come into play. When we build that mining town, uh, not too far away now I don't think. I realise I'm saying like there's just there's so much to do <laughs> in Agamborough. Um, it's just, yeah, lots of ideas, so I hope you're enjoying the slower pace in here. I don't realise we might be going too slow sometimes. But uh, there is another little riverside road here now that just flows over as another connection uh, whenever we need that when we come to work on this space over here. Same again with the alleyway road that comes out of the port. Uh, more stone mining facility over here. And uh, the power plant's kind of a perfect crawling height, isn't it, up to the main port here. Um, really happy we included the geothermal here, so we've kind of really future-proofed Edinburgh's power production for quite a while now. Uh, lots of little bits of zoning under the bridge, which I really like, and uh, of course we'll one day see this get hooked in as well. So we're now starting to see a lot of those kind of arterial and collector systems beginning to converge. We're going to have one uh, come out from this way across the river. We've already got one here. I imagine once this dual carriageway hooks in with this dual carriageway, there'll be another river crossing. So just starting to prepare those river crossings in advance of when we're actually getting ready to cross onto the next landmass. Uh, which is always really important, I think, for managing traffic. Uh, so some of the values for in City Skylines 1 anyway. And seems to be translating uh, fairly well into City Skylines 2. But uh, I love the additions of the boats moving around uh, the Whiskey Lock now, I guess, isn't it? Because it's not really a river, it is more of a lock, this one. So Whiskey Lock now has the container ships going under it which is uh, very, very cool to see. I'm really happy to see that coming and going. And uh, we might have another container port on the other side of the river once we do come to develop this town. Again, the rival to Whiskey is going to be opposite here. Maybe we'll call this Bourbon or something like that. <laughs> we can do a more industrial infrastructure over this side, but at least for Whiskey, 
Uh, this is pretty much acceptable for what I want. But otherwise, guys, it is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do go a long way to helping grow the channel and get ever closer to that push to 100,000 subscribers, which is really coming up. So thanks for all the continued support and subscriptions. Really appreciate it all. Otherwise, I'm very happy with the port of whiskey. Came across really nicely, some really nice big infrastructure additions as well today. Alongside really upgrading the road network around here too. And future proofing as well with bridges and rail connection. Next episode, we'll definitely go finish whiskey over in the west side and bring in train lines and some more housing. And just generally tie up that side of the town. And I think we're pretty much done with whiskey after that. We can probably head and establish our mining town. It should be quite a lot of fun. Massive shout out to all the patrons supporting the channel with a special roll call to Felix Wilkinson. Really appreciate everything you guys do. Helps make all these videos possible. So thank you so much for all the Patreon support. If you are interested in Patreon, you do get some nice bonus perks and some fun little previews. So links are all down below as to how you can support the channel. But otherwise, please do enjoy today's cinematics. Put a shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.